Hi, I'm Jem Matthew Sadler, and welcome to this review of the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. And it's a review with a difference, because we're taking a look at the games together with AlphaZero, DeepMind's general purpose artificial intelligence system. And this series of videos presents AlphaZero's unique take on the World Championship games. So in a previous uh, series of videos, we looked at games one to eight, and this series of videos finishes the sequence um, looking at games 9 to 12. Just as in the previous videos, we're looking at this material thematically rather than chronologically. So we're going to be taking a look first of all at the Sicilian Sveshnikov games in games uh, 10 and 12. Then afterwards we'll take a quick look at the uh, Petrov game and then afterwards the English opening in game 9. So when I looked at uh, the first four games in the Sicilian um, I suggested that Magnus Carlsen had a very specific strategy with Black against Fabiano Caruana. I felt that he was looking for positions in which Caruana had to look out for the safety of his own king, and Magnus was willing to take positional risks even to get into that sort of situation. Well, you can never be 100% sure about, um, um, about those sort of suggestions, but it certainly must be said that in the last two Sicilian games, Fabiano's king certainly felt the heat a little. Let's take a look now at game 10. So the game started, uh, well, with what's become standard now in the match, the Sicilian Sveshnikov. And uh, Magnus repeated the line uh, that he played earlier with knight b8. And actually, so did Fabiano. So a great clash there. But after knight d7, uh, Caruana innovated in this position with a move uh, 12b4. It's a very interesting move, and uh, it was intriguing to see that uh, AlphaZero started off from quite a, um, a lowish evaluation, just under 50% expected score for white. But the longer it carried on, uh, the longer it, uh, the more its evaluation rose. And in the end, it was about uh, around 55%. So obviously, there's you know, some sort of hidden features there that, uh, that even AlphaZero took a while to figure out. Um, it's not AlphaZero's favourite move in the position, but it's, um, uh, in terms of uh, evaluation, it's actually pretty close. AlphaZero's uh, favourite move in the position is actually standard theory, which is the move King H1. So in this position, uh, I think uh, Magnus was um, uh, surprised, so uh, had to work out a plan for himself. And um, he played the, the plan A6, Knight A3 and A5. Um, now, this is not AlphaZero's uh, favorite plan. Um, I think if you uh, had a look at the previous videos, you'll know that um, AlphaZero really loves to play on the king side and the center in these types of positions. And um, uh, it was advocating the move um, f5. And after a5, a6, knight a3, then the move f4. And actually, um, uh, after knight c4, it was even, even following up with e4. Um, yeah, and we saw, uh, uh, well, we saw a few things like that in, uh, in previous games, and, uh, um, well, we'll see Magnus doing something very similar in this game. It's a very aggressive idea. Um, Black has the possibility of playing f4 to f3 to open up the king side. And AlphaZero was looking at, um, at two different lines. Um, it thought that knight d2 was the best for white, and either it was going to play knight f6, followed by queen e8 to g6, or it was going to play uh, the move bishop f6, and after rook a3, then queen e7. In both cases, f4 to f3 is coming pretty soon. Alpha zero was still, still felt that white had a, an edge in this position, but uh, I can certainly say it scared me. Magnus played um, something which is uh, very natural. He went a6, driving back the knight, knight a3, and then a5. And the idea of this move is to fight for the uh, queenside dark squares. Um, if this pawn on b4 disappears, then black will get the c5 square for the knight. Um, it wasn't Alpha Zero's favorite plan. Actually, Alpha Zero's um, uh, evaluation jumped here from uh, you know, around 55% before to 62% expected score for white. Quite a big jump. I mean, I think in general, Alpha Zero does not like to um, act on the queen side in these types of positions. It feels that black should be putting all its efforts into, onto the uh, king side and center. Um, and not giving white uh, a help to, uh, to open lines on the, uh, on the queen side. Um, and that was, um, uh, well, as you saw in the game, um, um, although black got the c5 square, it was very difficult for black to make use of it, whereas, uh, well, white had a lot of possibilities on the queen side. So Fabiano played b takes a5, which was the, um, uh, 
of the AlphaZero recommendation, Knight C4, Rook A8, Bishop B3. So um, the white pieces are pointing towards the B6 square, which is quite a sensitive square for black on the queen side. F5, and now um, Fabiano played A5. Um, AlphaZero was quite keen on that move, but um, actually felt that, uh, that there was an, an even, uh, I think, more um, efficient way of playing, and that was to play the move F3. It has a very specific um, regrouping in mind, a way of keeping the king side uh, safe against possible attack, and then proceeding on to, uh, to attack on the queen side. It's actually uh, quite nice. It was a very nice piece configuration, so I'll just show you that. So after f4, bishop f2, rook f6, pretty obvious plan for black. Bring the rook over to h6, possibly the bishop to h4, and, um, and, and you know, really try and uh, create something on the, uh, on the king side. So alpha zero was looking at, uh, at this idea, rook fb1, bishop h4, bishop f1. And after queen g5, this very important move, which it saw already you know, around move uh, 17, rook a3. And I think it um, took me a while to, uh, to understand this, but um, I think the idea was alpha zero was afraid of black playing a move like e5 to e4. Um, and then at some stage later, not immediately, but uh, having a, a, an extra resource like f4 to f3. Um, this move, rook to a3, covers the third rank. Uh, basically, nothing's getting past there. And after that, it's, it's strangely difficult for black to, um, um, to actually increase any of his pressure on the king side. Um, Alpha Zero is giving this, uh, this line here with a 70% expected score, which is uh, starting to get quite significant for white. I mean, in general, these lines are, are quite fraught for black. Um, black's got a, a small number of pieces on the king side, so rook, queen, and, uh, and bishop. And if black wants to attack, black will really need to get the knight involved um, and hopefully the bishop as well. But as soon as this knight moves, for example, a move like knight f6, then, um, well, black center begins to drop. Um, so it's a very, very fraught operation for, uh, for black to, uh, he's really got to judge properly when to bring pieces onto the king side. Um, but f3 was, uh, was alpha zero's move. Um, you'll see in the game later that, uh, well, alpha zero was, was trying to get that later, but obviously with a couple, uh, a couple of tempi uh, fewer. So, um, but anyway, uh, Fabiano played a5, Magnus came in with f4, we're not surprised about that now. Bishop to b6 and queen to e8. And this is um, uh, a very crucial decision at this point. And uh, Fabiano took a while on this, uh, on this move, but um, I think he probably didn't quite get it right. Um, he played this move, um, rook a3, which uh, well, shouldn't come as a surprise to us. We've seen it quite a few times now. It's a very typical move um, for the rook to um, activate itself and also cover possibly some third rank squares. However, in this case, um, it didn't quite um, get to the, um, the essence of the position, which is, I think, really, that black wants to play e5 to e4 and f4 to f3. And this was um, uh, the point of alpha zero's recommended move, which is um, to play the move uh, rook e1. Um, and I'll just give you um, um, the first illu illustrative line, actually. After e4, there's possibly even better moves than this, but, uh, but this is the move that really, uh, really shows um, um, one of the key points of rook e1. Here you could play the move bishop h5, and after g6, rook takes e4, gh, queen e1, uh, all of a sudden there's a big problem defending the bishop on e7 because a move like rook f7 um, allows this move knight takes d6. Um, so this move rook e1 is really directed against e4. Of course, just in general, the rook opposite the queen on the e-file is also making e4 a little less, um, a little less tempting. What you've also got is, uh, for example, if black plays a move queen g6, as Magnus played in the game, then white's got the possibility of playing bishop d3, taking control of e4. And after a move like queen g5, then alpha zero, I think we'll recognize the, uh, the plan here, wants to play f3 again. Uh, rook f6, bishop f2, um, rook h6, and bishop f1 again, setting up this defensive structure with the, um, uh, with the two bishops. Um, and I'll just give you an illustrative line because it, it, um, it sort of shows um, something that Alpha Zero was looking for continually, and you, you see it in its lines an awful lot. So Queen H5, H3, Rook G6, threatening Queen takes H3, so the King steps out of the way. Um, and then, in order to, to make some progress, Black's actually got to try and, uh, well, actually he's going to need to, to exchange off some pieces. Um, but what you see is that Alpha Zero is very, very happy 
um, if it can exchange off a couple of minor pieces. Normally that's the, um, uh, the knight and the dark squared bishop. Here it's the, uh, uh, both black bishops. Um, but once alpha zero has achieved something like this, um, its evaluation really starts to increase. And I think there's, there's two reasons for that. First of all, the exchange of pieces makes it much more difficult for black to attack on the king's side. So counterplay on the king's side is reduced. And secondly, once, the, um, uh, once black loses a few minor pieces like that, the queen side is much, much more difficult to, um, uh, to defend. And um, well, just give this sample line. It's getting to be a rather long line now, so there might be a few uh, improvements along the way, but it's quite uh, illustrative. This is what um, um, Alpha Zero was, uh, was looking at. Um, an idea like this, rook b1, and actually after knight c5, it simply wanted to, surprisingly, have to take the, the knight, takes, and rook b7, and follow up with a6, um, which is surprisingly dangerous uh, in actual fact. That's maybe not the, um, uh, the absolute line that Alpha Zero would have played, but you get the, uh, the, get the idea, I think. And the, the key point is this um, positional idea of uh, swapping off um, um, a couple of sets of minor pieces in order to reduce the attack on the king's side and then allow invasion points on the, uh, on the queen side. So that was um, uh, rookie one, uh, which uh, Alpha Zero was, um, was pretty positive about. After rook a3, it started to be Magnus's games. Um, I was um, actually thinking that, uh, that black could even play e4 immediately. Um, and Alpha Zero was so kind as to, um, uh, you know, as to, to make it work for me, uh, with a very creative idea, actually. Um, King h1, knight f6, bishop c7, attacking the pawn on d6. Queen d7, knight b6, takes here, queen c5. And with f3 coming, um, there's quite a lot of counterplay for the exchange. Um, but Alpha Zero's main move was the move that Magnus played, uh, Queen G6, Bishop C7, um, played, uh, I think, to stop uh, the Black Knight from coming over to F6, and now E4. And after King H1, uh, Magnus played this, uh, well, incredibly visual move, um, and that's this move B5. What's the point of B5? Um, it's exploiting um, a, an interesting fact that if A takes B6, then black can play rook a3, knight a3. And um, this rook on a3 that was defending the third rank has suddenly uh, disappeared, which gives black a lot of attacking ideas. Funnily enough, um, um, I mean, f3, gf, knight e5 uh, has been suggested in various places and looks very strong. Um, Alpha Zero saw this, but uh, actually decided to play the, uh, the idea knight e5. And after f3, uh, bishop h4, intending bishop g3 and queen h6, uh, it also felt this was very, very strong. Um, I think the best line it, it had was b7, ef, gf, bishop b7, with um, a very nice position for black. So, I mean, Fabiano showed nerves of steel at this point, because um, this is a very, um, a very difficult and, uh, and unpleasant position for white to defend, but um, he kept on playing excellent moves. And here Magnus, um, I think probably Magnus wasn't quite finding a win. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not there, so it's, uh, it's, it's not too surprising in a way, I suppose, but, uh, and was really trying to force things. Uh, and he played this move queen g5, um, which sacrifices the pawn on b5, and uh, it seems that that was actually um, a wrong decision, although, uh, again, you'd have to be uh, really very, very brave to take that pawn on b5. Um, Alpha Zero's move was to play um, bishop d7, um, and after rook g1, this was a very typical move. I, I, was, I was wondering whether alpha zero was feeling a little bit unwell at this point, uh, playing the move, move like rook g1. But the point is simply that um, you're just prepared for f3. You know, after f3, you could take the pawn on f3 and your rook's on the g file. So um, uh, alpha zero continues with bishop f6, a6. This little move to knock the rook off its uh, ideal post. And then, yeah, Alpha Zero takes um, um, a particular decision. Simply, um, it gives up some pawns, but in order to break this, um, uh, this whole paw, uh, wall of black pawns. And uh, in this sort of position, um, Alpha Zero was giving itself approximately 50% expected score as white, a little bit lower. Um, it's simply using this pawn on a6 um, as a way of uh, distracting the black pieces, which compensates for the, uh, for the pawn minus. So um, Magnus played queen g5, um, Fabiano didn't take on b5, which he, he probably could have done, and played the move uh, g3. 
Um, and actually, I mean, both players played exceptionally well at this point. Um, Fabiano really kept on taking good decisions here, um, exchanging off pieces and just hanging in there. Um, I think there's really only one point where uh, Alpha Zero thought that uh, Magnus could have played just a little bit better. And that's with the, um, uh, uh, this move. It thought that Rook FC8 would have given Black a 59% expected score, um, which is um, you know, a little edge, but not, uh, not too much. I mean, for the rest of the game, Fabiano uh, held things together very well. And um, when Magnus overpressed a little in the ending, uh, even had uh, some slight advantage, uh, amazingly enough. But this was uh, you know, an exceptionally interesting game. I was very, very, very interested by what uh, Alpha Zero was trying to do in the opening. Uh, first of all, avoiding any um, queenside play in order to really focus on its uh, um, kingside and, uh, and central play. Um, and then the way it was trying to, first of all, consolidate the king side with uh, this, this maneuver f3, bishop f2, bishop f1, and then trusting in its long-term uh, advantage on the queen side and knowing that, um, as, that black really has difficulties increasing the, um, the number of pieces he uses in his, uh, in his kingside attack, simply because of the weaknesses on the queen side. So now I'd uh, like to take a look at uh, game 12, which of course was uh, you know, incredibly thrilling. Uh, the players tied on uh, five and a half points each. And the question, is Fabiano going to, uh, to play for a win, or is he going to do what, um, what Magnus did against Kariakin in, in uh, 2016? tie off the game and then um, you know, go, for the, um, go for the playoffs. Uh, everyone thought that Fabiano would really go for it, and he really did. He really played a very aggressive game. So after e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, we get another Shlesnikov. Um, and here, uh, Magnus was the first to uh, surprise Fabiano with knight e7. And this, is, um, uh, this has been played quite recently in the Batumi Olympiad in 2018. Um, against Vlad Vladimir Kramnik. Um, and Fabiano followed this game for a, a while, playing h4. Um, but here, um, Magnus deviated with h5, which is a, um, a novelty in human chess, although it has been played in a computer uh, chess game before. Um, Fabiano uh, fainted a little bit with uh, queen a4 and queen b4 before carrying on with the move bishop e3. This wasn't actually um, Alpha Zero's favorite move. Um, Alpha Zero's favorite move was to play uh, Bishop G5, which is an um, interesting uh, variation. Um, so Black plays Queen B8. Um, Alpha Zero played around with a number of development options before uh, coming onto this one. Bishop B2, A6, Knight C3, and then this move Queen C7. The idea is that, um, well, Black doesn't want to play F6 in order to, um, uh, which would weaken its kingside light squares wants to play bishop e7, but after bishop takes e7, it doesn't want to recapture with the king, it wants to recapture with the queen. And here Alpha Zero was, uh, not for the first time in, uh, in this analysis, was um, playing around with its queen, trying to find some sort of, uh, um, well, some way of, of disrupting black's development. And uh, it's very, very interesting. He went to uh, queen a4 check. Um, now, in the endings, Queen d7, Alpha Zero was, um, was very, very happy with this, um, saying um, that White had something like a 66% expected score. So something like Bishop e7, takes, takes, King d2, Knight a4, Bishop d8, takes, takes, b4. Uh, Alpha Zero really loved these positions for White. So after Bishop d7, White plays Queen a3. Um, and there's a very clever point to this. Um, so Black plays Bishop f5 again. White plays this uh, consolidating move g3. Um, and after bishop e7, well, we've actually got a couple of ideas here, uh, which um, must have been quite close in, uh, in evaluation because alpha zero was uh, kind of swapping between the two uh, from time to time. So one idea would be to play uh, knight b5. And after queen d7, well, we can take on e7, forcing the king to e7. And then after knight c3, well, you know, white has... Uh, has given black a little bit of inconvenience in, uh, in the position. Um, and the other idea is to play um, simply bishop uh, takes e7, queen takes e7, queen a4 check. Again, alpha zero likes the exchange of queens after queen d7. And if bishop d7, then queen b4, uh, lining up on the, uh, on the b7 pawn. And um, um, if black plays castles, then white has knight e4. 
because the bishop has been chased away from f5. And um, if black goes back to f5, um, well, actually, at uh, this stage, I, uh, I sort of uh, said out loud to myself, come on, alpha zero, find, show me a plan. And uh, it did straight away with this nice maneuver, knight d1, um, where the, um, uh, the knight's coming round to e3 just to uh, annoy this, um, this, uh, this bishop on f5. And if um, black plays the maneuver knight f8, which um, was actually a, a maneuver that um, Magnus played in the game, this was really uh, what Alpha Zero thought black should do. Uh, the idea is the bishop goes back to g6 to protect the pawn on h5, and the knight comes round to d7, aiming for c5. Then white plays um, knight e3, bishop g6, and then actually alpha zero was looking at c5, getting this move in before black achieves knight d7 to c5. And uh, yeah, this was a pretty interesting uh, position here, bishop e4 and castles. And alpha zero uh, give, gave itself a very small plus, 55% expected score. But uh, I mean, you definitely see that, uh, that things are happening in this position. So this was what uh, Alpha Zero was looking at after uh, after Bishop G five. Um, yeah, in the game Fabiano played Bishop E three, which um, yeah Alpha Zero that that dropped its evaluation uh, a fair amount. And actually, the reason for that was that it it simply wanted to play Bishop E seven in this position. Um, yeah, Alpha Zero was looking at um, uh, at uh, at this line for uh, for White, but uh, certainly considering the uh, you know the how crucial this last round was, you know, the, 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 uh, the last game in the World Championship match tied at five and a half all. Uh, you really have to have nerves of steel to take that pawn on b7, I feel. Um, the other idea was simply that if, um, if a move like g3, alpha zero really just wanted to, to start going for it. And apart from this plan of knight f8 to d7 and bishop g6, e4 was the other big plan that alpha zero wanted, giving up any amount of pawns, uh, simply in order to, um, to get control of the light squares. And um, you can be pretty sure that b5 uh, won't be far away either. So, um, but Magnus played queen c7, um, after which uh, um, yeah, alpha zero's evaluation rose again. Um, and here was a, um, another interesting moment. And um, Fabiano played um, uh, the moves uh, g3 and f3, consolidating his position. Um, Perfectly fine, um, but they did give Black the opportunity to consolidate his position. Um, and what Alpha Zero was looking for, um, Alpha Zero was basically saying, "Well, I know that Black is going to play Bishop e7, then Knight f8, then Bishop g6, then Knight to d7 and castle." And this organisation of pieces with a Knight on d7 and Bishop on g6 is very, very harmonious for um, uh, for Black. So Alpha Zero was looking to disrupt it. And uh, it did this with this move queen a4 check. And after bishop d7, it was going back to b3. So what are the ideas in this position? Um, well, first of all, if black goes bishop f5, then alpha zero had got uh, this nice move prepared, knight e2. Um, and the idea is to come round to g3 uh, with a knight and attack the bishop on f5 and uh, also embarrass the pawn on h5. It's um, uh, very, very interesting. So, um, for example, if black goes queen a5, this was alpha zero's uh, main line, then white's playing bishop d2, queen c7, and knight g3. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, attacking the bishop on f5, the pawn on h5. Uh, perhaps even more interestingly, if um, black plays uh, the move bishop e7, then after knight g3, uh, bishop g4, white goes f3, bishop d7, bishop b6. You notice that, um, that this bishop on b6, very common idea, uh, again, in alpha zero's lines, um, stopping black from playing b7 to b5. And that means that after queen b8, white goes knight e4, just to get ahead of f5. And after castles, then castles queenside. With a 62% expected score. And uh, to be honest, I mean, I think... This was the kind of thing that Fabiano was really thinking about during his game, I think. Um, we saw in the game that he castled queenside and he was really trying to get something like this. You know, white is simply going to play g4 and then open up the king side. It's very, very dangerous for black. Only the way that he managed to implement it, um, well, black had actually managed to get the knight to d7 and the bishop to g6. So that was um, 
all very, very interesting, seeing how AlphaZero um, um, looked at all these things. Um, in the game, white went g3, um, and then bishop b7, f3. Knight f8, knight e4, knight d7, bishop d3, castles. Um, and this is a very interesting moment in the, uh, in the match, in actual fact. Um, I mean, first of all, it shows Fabiano's enormous character because um, he wasn't looking just to play um, a very normal move like, like Castles, which was uh, Alpha Zero's recommendation, um, followed by Rook AC1. Um, Alf, um, Fabiano played this incredible move, Rook H2, and it's really a move full of aggression. Um, he's um, basically saying he's going to castle on the queen side and then try and push this g pawn to g4. And that rook is coming over to c2 to protect white against uh, any pressure on the c file. Um, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a great concept, um, but you know, very, very ambitious um, and certainly you know, very, very brave for, uh, for this sort of situation. Um, and the first thing that occurred to me when I saw it was that, um, again, Fabiano was, was kind of putting his king into the, uh, into the danger area here because the queen side, it is very easy for black to start opening lines on that side. And, uh, and yet Fabiano is putting his king on, on, on that side. And I sort of felt that, um, that when he did this, that, um, that Magnus's strategy was, was, was kind of working again. That was, that was just my feeling. Um, but I mean, it's an incredibly brave move. Really shows, you know, how how motivated and how brave he was and, uh, and ready he was for this game. So Magnus's next moves, actually uh, AlphaZero's moves and, uh, and Magnus's moves match perfectly in the, um, uh, in the next uh, seven or eight moves. It was really you know, very, very impressive. So first of all, the rook ac8. And uh, it's not quite an obvious one. You might uh, think about putting the other rook there to, to c8. But Magnus was, was thinking about advancing the f-pawn in order to drive away this uh, knight on e4 from, uh, from its good outpost. And alpha zero was, was absolutely into that plan. Um, yeah, knight f2 was, um, um, yeah, I think you know, Fabiano was probably not that happy with, uh, with knight g5. I mean, this was the line that uh, alpha zero was calculating um, a very long way back, actually, after rook h2. Um, and it's, 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 it's beautiful, it's got a real flow to it. So um, bishop g5, h g5 was the main line, and now f4, opening the line of the bishop on g6. After bishop f4, the knight comes into c5, and after f e, rook c8, queen a3 uh, was the main line, and then h4. And uh, two pawns down, the whole board is on fire. Um, the only thing you know is that this e pawn is not going to stay and that once that e-pawn goes, this bishop is going to be very, very dangerous for, uh, for white. You could even imagine a queen, and, uh, a queen and bishop battery on the h7b1 diagonal coming around and giving mate to, uh, to white. It's very, very dangerous indeed. I mean, alpha zero gives it something like, a, I think, a 57% expected score, but, um, well, from a scariness factor, it's, uh, it's a very huge expected score, I think. Um, after knight f2, um, Knight c5, f4, uh, I think, you know, Fabiano, it's a very reasonable decision, um, a very logical decision to play this move f3, f4, to stop Black from playing f4 himself. But it, um, it left open a, a very dangerous tactical possibility, which, um, yeah, strangely, Magnus didn't, um, didn't spot, or I think rather more likely wasn't quite uh, attuned to it yet, uh, the idea that he could be so much better, maybe. Um, but e takes f4, bishop takes f4, and then b5 is extremely strong. Um, alpha zero's main line was uh, queen d2, trying to get out of the way of that. Um, for example, if, there's, uh, if you play a move like bishop f1, for example, um, then black has this incredible trick, bishop b8 trapping the queen. So that means that the uh, queen would have to retreat to something like d2, but then after b4, we're getting b3 in. It's a very, very unpleasant position for, uh, for white. So um, queen d2 was uh, alpha zero's move, but after these um, uh, further consolidating moves, um, this looks incredibly ugly for, um, uh, for white. Alpha zero gives it 67% expected score, but uh, with a king open, two bishops, 
Um, and now rather poor minor pieces. I, I wouldn't fancy defending this at all with, uh, with wine. It's something I could lose very easily, I know. So, um, yeah, Magnus played A5, and Magnus played it uh, very solidly, although, to be honest, Alpha Zero was, um, um, after the move A5, which it, it didn't like, preferring B5, it felt that Magnus played excellently, you know, for the next few moves again. These were all Alpha Zero's uh, moves. And then in this position, I mean, there's this opportunity that's been uh, mentioned again uh, quite often, Bishop A4, with the idea again of Rook C1 and B5. And um, um, when you follow the line through with, uh, with Alpha Zero, you get to a 76% expected score. I mean, this, this B file is just getting opened and it's, um, it's very, very unpleasant for, um, uh, for White. A line like uh, this, for example, was, uh, was Alpha Zero's main line, Knight H3 and then Queen B6. So there's only really one more moment uh, of, of interest, I suppose, before um, uh, the draw was agreed, surprisingly enough, although you know, even in the final position, Magnus did stand uh, very, very pleasantly. Um, and that's after Queen b4, Alpha Zero thought that um, uh, Knight a6 would be an, uh, an, an interesting move here. Um, the idea is that after a move like, for example, Queen b6, Black plays Queen b8, and then after Rook e c1, we play Bishop d8, Queen d4, and then we can play uh, b5, which you know, achieves something uh, similar to, uh, to all those moves ago. It's, it's less good, but it's, um, it's still quite unpleasant for white. But uh, yeah, the game ended uh, suddenly and, uh, and unexpectedly after the moves g6, rook d1, rook a8, Magnus uh, offering a draw from a position of strength, and Fabiano accepting. So those were the two um, Sicilian Sveshnikov games. Um, very, very interesting games. I mean, I think we, we should uh, really feel very lucky that we've had uh, a world championship match that discusses, uh, you know, such a, a sharp and, uh, you know, complex strategic uh, opening. Um, I felt that Alpha Zero, yeah, really brought a few, um, uh, yeah, lovely new insights into uh, how to handle the position, particularly with, um, with Black, with this very aggressive uh, uh, E5 and then F5, F4 and E4. Um, in the opening as soon as possible, uh, not playing to touch the queen side, uh, simply leaving it there and uh, trying to do as much as possible on the uh, on the king side. And I, th I felt, you know, in in um, in, um, in the tenth game as well, I thought that Alpha Zero showed an awful lot for for White as well about how to handle these positions. And of course, you've got to give a lot of credit to um, I think first of all Fabiano for his wonderful opening preparation, finding uh, you know some excellent ideas uh, to really rejuvenate this line. And um, of course, Magnus, uh, well, played it very well as well with, uh, with Black. So I hope you enjoyed those, uh, those games and that, uh, that whole sequence of games from, uh, in the Sicilian Two Knights E6 from, uh, from, uh, from game one to 12. And uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at the two remaining games, the Petrov uh, of game 11 and the English of game nine.